The Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. You just don't realize how bright and cheerful your kitchen can be until you've used Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on the linoleum. A gleaming, shining film of glow coat reflects the sunlight, makes colors brighter, gives the room that cheery, neat-as-a-pin look. And it's easy to keep floors sparkling clean and bright with glow coat, too. Dust, dirt, and spilled things can be whisked away with just a wipe or two of a damp cloth. That glowing film of tough, hard wax will protect your linoleum from wear and scuffing. Make it last a lot longer. The new Johnson's Glow Coat is better than ever, you know. It shines nearly twice as bright as ever before. And yet, it's the same, it's still the same wonderfully easy-to-use product. No rubbing or buffing. You merely apply and let dry. With Glow Coat, you can always touch up heavy traffic areas when necessary. And that's a mighty big time saver. Be sure to use Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat to bring out the beauty and brightness of your home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of a You know, you can do some interesting things with color. Take a Western Union telegram, for instance. That little yellow paper can turn cheeks pink, hair gray, finances red, and lovers blue. But it's anybody's guess what it's going to do to somebody as the messenger boy approaches 79 Wistful Vista, the home of Fibber McGee and Molly. Hi, small fry. What's on your mind? Oh, Western Union. Yeah, you Fibber McGee? No, freckle puss. I'm Trixie Fraganza. <laughs> Our cradles got mixed up in the hospital. <laughs> uh, I got a telegram from Fibber McGee. Here, uh, uh, give it to him when he comes in, will you, Trixie? Uh, <laughs> sign here, third line. Okay, bud. What's the usual tip to you messenger boys? I don't want to be cheap, you understand, but we got to keep things under control on account of inflation. Well... <laughs> Look, Mike, this is the first time I ever delivered to this address, see? But the other guys say that if I get a dime out of you, I'm doing great. Oh. Oh, they said that, did they? Well, just to prove them little rum-dums wrong, take this. There's 50 cents. Yeah. Gee, thanks, Mac. I'll put this into my special school fund. Oh, school fund, eh? What are you studying, boy? Psychology. How am I doing? <laughs> A successful psychologist with a telegram. <laughs> for me, I wonder who this could be from. Oh, maybe it's from dear old Aunt Sarah wanting to come and spend a few weeks with it. Yeah, or it could be good news. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my... Oh! Well, heavenly days, what is it? Who is it from? Oh. What does it say? Oh. Don't just stand something and tell me there. Look me. <laughs> it's, it's from the Secretary of State. Secretary yeah. of State? Let me see it. Look, you see what it says? George Marshall, secretary. My goodness. You have been recommended for special duty connection with recovery plan. Have full report on you and leave you to be ideal man to spearhead commission. What? Can you report my office soon as convenient, ready for assignment? Oh. Please reply immediately. George Marshall, secretary. Well, you know what this means, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I got to go to Washington. Is this a military or civilian job? Well, uh, I don't know. Why? Well, I want to know whether to put a star or a rubber plant in the window. <laughs> Gary, do you have to go to Washington? My dear, no McGee has ever refused to answer his country's call. Peter Stuyvesant McGee fell at Concord. Clay Morgan McGee fell at Vicksburg. Theodore McGee fell at San Juan Hill. And I fell at St. Nazaire. <laughs> When I tripped over my knapsack getting off of the boat. And I was the only one of them that was badly hurt, too. The others were all killed. Well, what's the first move, McGee? Better answer Mr. Marshall's telegram, I suppose. Oh, my gosh, yes. Hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. 
Hello, operator. Give me Western Union till... Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. How's every little thing, Mert? Is he? What say, Mert? Your grandmother lost her shirt on a long shot, eh? I... An old lady like her playing the race. She wasn't playing the races. She gambled 98 bucks in postage thinking Mort Toops was the walking man. <laughs> Why should the walking man have been more tooped? They just repossessed his car. <laughs> they just repossessed his car. <laughs> Hello, Mert. You got Western Union? Oh, thanks. Hello, Wes. Take a straight wire. Collect. To George Marshall, Secretary of State. Now, hold it a minute, operator. Hey, Molly, what building in Washington would the Secretary of State be in? Try Internal Revenue. Why Internal Revenue? If they can find you, they can find him. <laughs> Hello, Op. To George Marshall, Secretary of State, in care of Internal Revenue Department, Washington, T.C. Leaving Wistful Vista immediately. Stop. Uh, see you tomorrow. Stop. I hope you have a big job for me. Stop. When my patriotism is around, I don't know where to... When my patriotism is aroused, I don't know where to... Stop. <laughs> Signed, Pippa McGee. Stop. Rush that operator. Stop. Government business. Heavenly days. Isn't this exciting? How do you suppose Secretary Marshall ever heard about you? I don't know, but they got ways of finding the right men for the right jobs, and I got a pretty good army record, too, you know. You have? Yeah, I'll play it for you sometime. <laughs> it goes, you're in the army now, you're not behind the plow, you'll never get... <laughs> well, that's as much of it as I'd have played for you anyway, kid. That's enough. Come in. Oh, it's Mr. Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. I'm sorry, I can't take much time to talk, Wimp. I'm being called to Washington. Oh, my goodness. Have you been speculating, Mr. McGee? I should say not, Mr. Wimple. The government wants him to do some important work for them. I'd tell you all about it, Wimp, but I can't. It's security reasons, you know. Highly confidential, top secret, hush hush. Besides, I don't know yet myself. Hmm, <laughs> isn't that interesting? Yep. Sweetie Face did a lot of secret work during the war. Yeah. Sweetie Face, that's my large elderly wife. <laughs> yes, we know. What'd she do, Wimp? Take army pilots around to nightclubs so they'd get used to low dives? <laughs> <laughs> no. The War Department used Sweetie Face as a model. Oh. As a model for what, Mr. Wimple? General Sherman Tanks. <laughs> oh, I can see the resemblance, too, now that you speak of it, Wimp. Yes, dear. In fact, she still crouches a little every time a plane flies overhead. <laughs> but I don't want to delay you, Mr. McGee. Besides, I've got to get down to the marriage license bureau. The license bureau? Yes. Sweetie Face bought our little marriage license down there, and every March 16th, I go down there and pay my respects. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> Isn't that sentimental, McGee? Oh, well, that sure is, Wimp. What do you do, just walk up and leave a few flowers on the counter? Oh, no. no. Nothing as elaborate as all that, Mr. No. McGee. I just walk up to window number 13, remind them of the date, and go... Blah, 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 and then run right <laughs> over. Billy Mills and the orchestra and the big brass band. Thank <laughs> you. 
I got shirt, socks, shorts, shirts, neckties, socks, my watch, and my wallet. Did you make a reservation on the Washington plane, Molly? Yes, you leave at 422. Well, oh, thanks. I don't want to miss it. I got a hunch this is really something really serious. You know, Snooky, remember the telegram? It said, believe you to be ideal man to spearhead commission. You get that? Mm-hmm. They want me to spearhead somebody. <laughs> and I'm just the guy that can do it, too. I'll grab that spear, take a short run at him, and wham! Bullseye, shoot again. That was the doorbell. And whoever it is, don't let him delay me. I gotta finish packing. All right. Uh, come in. Oh, it's Mr. Williams, the weatherman, McGee. Hello, Mr. Williams. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi, Polly. Oh, I see you're packing up. Going somewhere? No. No, no. I I just pack these bags down then so I won't run out of toothpaste at home here, Polly. You see, every time I pack, I forget to put in toothpaste, always leave it at home, and therefore, the oftener I pack a suitcase, the more toothpaste I have laying around the house. I haven't had to buy any for four, five, ten years. Just, just pack a suitcase, look in the bathroom, and there it is. Well, it's wonderful weather for a trip. We're rather proud of this weather at the office. Oh, it's been just lovely, Mr. Williams. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Personally, I'm glad to see spring coming. Yeah. Mrs. Williams even planted her garden yesterday. My gosh, so early? Anything come up yet? Yes, the neighbor's chicken. Hmm. What happened? I planted them. What happened? The neighbors came up. What happened? The next, the case comes up next week. <laughs> Atta boy, Foggy, stick up for your right. Just because you guessed wrong on the snow all winter is no sign people can shovel you around. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, may I ask where you're going, McGee? Oh, to Washington, Mr. Williams. The government uh, sent him a wire. Yeah. They want him to report immediately. Isn't that wonderful? By the way, I'll be connected with the State Department, Foggy, in kind of a hush-hush way. Anything I can do for you in the weather department, you know, put in a kind word, plug you for promotion, anything like that? Uh, no, uh, no, thank you very much, McGee. I think it would be best for me to remain as obscure as possible. I think. Besides, it isn't the weather department, you know. It's called the Weather Bureau. Why, Mr. Williams? Why? Why do they call it a bureau? <laughs> well, I haven't given it much thought, Mrs. McGee, but I suppose it's because, as a bureau, it depends largely on its forecasters. <laughs> Well, good day. <laughs> Forecast is old, brother. Well, let me see now. What else I need? Hey, where's my binoculars? Your binoculars? Yeah. In the window of a store downtown. A store downtown? What are they doing down there? Last I seen them, Uncle Dennis was using them when he went to the racetrack. Yes, I know. What store did you see them in? The one next to the tattooing parlor on 14th Street. Huh? It's a fruit store, I think. Fruit store? It has three big golden grapefruit hung over the front door. <laughs> Why, that dirty... He hocked him. If that guy ever comes back here, I'll... Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Hey, pal, you remember on February 17th when I was talking about Klondike Kate? Yeah, I remember that. And I said she was a gambler's daughter? Yeah. Well, I made a mistake. Klondike Kate, not a gambler's daughter at all. No. Klondike Kate is a name sometimes identified with Mrs. Kate Rockwell Matson, a respected citizen of Bend, Oregon. Her father was a telegrapher in Kansas. Well, I'm sure Mrs. Matson will understand that you thought it was purely a fictional name, Mr. Wilcox. Yes, I'm sorry. Hey, pal, why the suitcase? Going away? No, Junior, no. I, I need my dresser doors for my comic books and my bubble gum. So. I'm putting my clothes away in this suitcase. Now, don't be so sarcastic, McGee. Well, if anybody's packing a suitcase... <laughs> He's going to Washington, Mr. Wilcox. The government wants him. What's the charge? What do you mean, what's the charge? By George, can't a public-spirited citizen do his country a service without being subjected to a lot of snide cracks? No wonder they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and have to get guys like me. <laughs> He got a wire from the Secretary of State, Mr. Wilcox. You betcha I did, and it's all according to Hoyle, too, Junior. Who? Hoyle. You remember Hoyle, don't you? I regret that I have but one life to live for my country. <laughs> Why, sure, Nathan Hoyle. 
Look, that was Nathan Hale. Certainly it was. Look, both of you. I'm a government man now, and if I'm wrong, I don't want to be corrected, see? <laughs> don't bother me now, kids. I've got to finish packing. Now, let me see. Here's my ivory back scratcher in case they send me to China. There's my... Say, hey, look, pal. Uh, do something for me down there in Washington, will you? Why, certainly, Omaha. I'm not the type of guy that just because he gets a high government position, he forgets his old pals. I'm strictly the type of guy that he likes to do favors for his old pals. What's on your mind, pal? Well, I just thought if you're going to be in the Pentagon building with acres and acres of linoleum in there, Uh-oh. you might put in a pitch for the old product, you know, glow coat. Well, I'll tell you, Junior... If you put that in a memo, make 12 copies and send it through the proper channels... Well, now, look, look. (laughs) Look, with thousands of government employees stamping in and out all day long, bringing in mud and dust and slush, what they need on those linoleum floors is Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Yeah. It's so quick and easy to use. Makes dirt so easy to wipe up. Protect so well against dirt and dust and saves so much time. Gives such wonderful protection. Yeah, Mr. Wilcox, what I all you gotta do, pal, all you gotta do is get to the right people. Sure. Use your influence. Lobby a little. Lobby. If they're not already using glow coat, tell them about yeah. it. Once they try Johnson's glow coat on their linoleum, they'll be so enthusiastic they'll. Look, 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 waxy. Yes, pal. Are you perchance intimating that I use my association with the State Department to help you sell a commercial product to our government? Why, sure. Will Cox leave this house immediately? But McGee... Go. Go where? Go down to your office and figure out what my commission will be. <laughs> okay, pal. I'll tell you right back. Yeah, that ain't bad. I ain't even taken the job yet, and I already worked out a deal. <laughs> public servants you're going to make, Diddy. Yeah, imagine me in Washington, Molly. And I never dreamed when I was foreman at that watchworks back in Peoria that someday in the State Department would be calling me to... You never told me you worked at the watchworks, McGee. I never told you about my work at the watchworks. You never did. Why, my gosh. Well, sir, when I went in there as foreman over the workmen working on watches at the watchworks, they had a bad situation. Yeah? Because every one of the watchworks workers was a clock watcher at heart. And even while they were working on watches, they were busy watching the clock. Now, if there's, any, if there's anything I hate to watch around the watchworks, it's a clock-watching watchmaker who should be making watches and watching the watches he makes. <laughs> so, I hired me a night watchman to watch nights and a day watchman to watch days and a watchman to watch both watchmen to try to make the watchman watch the watchworks and stop watching their stopwatches, and boy, did I give them watchmen the works. I ended up... <laughs> Dear? Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. McGee, it's Dr. Gamble. Huh? Oh, oh, hi, baby slapper. <laughs> hello, chisel nose. What are you packing up for in such a hurry? Mm. I just came through the post office and your picture isn't up on the wall yet. <laughs> He's going to Washington, doctor. The Secretary of State just sent him a telegram. Yeah. Isn't that a coincidence? Why? I just got a message by carrier pigeon from Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Wants to know what to do for seasickness. <laughs> Oh, oh, so you think I'm kidding, you big septic. Show him the telegram, Molly. Show it to him. I'm packing. Here it is, Doctor. Hmm. Well, I'll be darned. Yeah, how do you like those apples, wise guy? Snap this suitcase, Molly, while I sit on the All right, Diddy. Well, the manpower shortage must be really critical. If they're hiring a guy for the State Department who thinks a diplomat is something you put a dime into and get a piece of pie out of. (laughs) That's Ottoman, stupid. And don't worry about me getting along in the State Department. I know that foreign situation like a book. I listen to Gabriel Heater. Indeed he does, Doctor. He argues with that radio every night. That's our boy. If he was as loose with his money as he is with his lip, he'd never have a dime. And if he was as smart as he is loud, he'd be one of our great living statesmen. Well, thanks, Doc. I'll do all I can to justify your faith in me. Look, uh... I don't know who's kidding who around here, McGee, but frankly, I'm worried. What do you mean? If the government is so hard up for help that they've got to hire a lint head like you, we're in trouble. Oh, I don't know, Doctor. In a job that fits his talents, I think McGee might do very good work for the government. In a job that fits his talents, yes. But what does the State Department need with a mattress tester? (laughs) Oh, yeah? Well, look who's talking about mattress tasters, you hard-lined (laughs) ham-handed eater. You spend more time in the hay than a Kansas pitchfork. Now, McGee, stop it. I called a taxi cab, and it's almost due here now. Uh, Can we drop you any place, Doctor? Himself wants to stop by the Elks Club. No, thank you, my dear. Seriously, my boy, I wish you lots of luck. Huh? And one thing I'll say for you, you're at least going in there with an open mind. Well, thanks, Doctor. You admit I got an open mind? Wide open. (laughs) 
I remember how surprised my nurse was the day she looked into one of your ears and right out through the other. <laughs> that there is a falsehood. The day she looked at my ears, my head was all stopped up. She couldn't... Oh, oh there you are. There's your cab, McGee. Grab your thing. Okay, where's my overcoat? Oh, I got it. Where's my hat? Here, here's your muffler. Okay, well, my boy... You gotta run now, Doc. Be good. Well, we're coming, bud. But, McGee, I... Lock the door, Molly. I got everything. It's locked, there. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say one thing before you leave, Now, McGee. don't get mushy now, Doc. I'll miss you, too, but let's not get sentimental now. I'll write you a postcard. I don't care if you write a book, stupid. Uh -huh. But you left your suitcase in the house. Oh, <laughs> Over in Killarney, many years ago, my mother sang a song to me in tones so sweet and low, just a simple little ditty in her good old Irish way, and I'd give the world if she could sing that song to me. Club a minute. It won't be long. Take your time, Mac. It all goes on the meter. Mm. I'll go in with you, sweetheart. My goodness, I'm going to miss you. Well, please. you'll be brave, Tootsie, with the knowledge that your husband is unselfishly serving his country in its hour of need, with probably a fat salary and passes to all the big league ball games. And maybe... Hey, look who's coming, the old-timer. Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Hello there, kids. Where are you going? Someplace? Just going into the Elks Club to say goodbye, old-timer. I'm flying to Washington this afternoon. Isn't it wonderful for him? I've always wanted to see Washington myself. Me too, kids. Me too. Yeah. I shook hands with Abraham Lincoln one time at Washington was out rode a boat. I no, 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 no. <laughs> Not George Washington. This is a place. I got a wire to come to a job in Washington, you see. Oh, that Washington. Yeah. I had a job in Washington myself one time, Johnny. Right outside of Seattle, picking apples. Oh, no, no. If I was the apple picking a apple knocker you ever seen, kids. Pick so many apples, I was named the wine sap of the week. <laughs> look, old-timer, look, that's all very interesting, but I happen to be working for the government. Got a wire from Secretary Marshall. Wants me to spearhead a committee. Well, why didn't you see so, Johnny? <laughs> spearhead? Why, you like that. I remember one time when I was aboard a guard in Yuma. That should have been exciting, a border guard. Yep. Every time the landlady went out, she asked me to keep an eye on her border. <laughs> Kept in a good humor. Yes, indeed. I was spending most of my time at the time as a gym smuggler. You smuggled gems? I said I was a gym smuggler. Used to smuggle my brother Jim into the movies under my coat to save a ticket. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, how could you do that? Simple, daughter, simple. Yeah? I just let Jim climb on my back piggyback, see? Then I put my overcoat on over to him. I was known around movie houses for years as the boy with the broad shoulders. Did they finally catch on, though? They would have, Johnny. Only Jim kept getting hungry. Oh? The manager stood back one time and watched me feed three ice cream cones and a bottle of sarsaparilla down my coat collar and throwed me out and my little fat brother. <laughs> Do 
gave the pitch from the pitchers, did he? <laughs> But that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one fellow says, the other fellow says, he says, my cousin just invented a tonic that'll grow hair out of doorknobs. That's so, says the other fellow, he ought to get rich. Nope, says the first fellow, who wants hair on their doorknobs? <laughs> Adios, kids. Latin, you know. <laughs> Well, come on, let's see who's in the office to say goodbye to and then beat it to the airport. Oh, I wish I was going to Washington with you, dearie. Be sure and take a shower every night now and send your laundry out. Nah, don't cotton. worry, kiddo. I'll send for you just as soon as oh, I get... Oh, hi, Mickey. Glad you dropped him. Oh, hi, Georgie. I can't stay but a minute. I just stopped by to say goodbye to the boys. I'm leaving for Washington on the 422 plane. No kidding? Yep, government well, deal. Gee, when will you be back? I was kind of counting on some help from you. Got a little problem here, and... Uh, yeah, what's up? Some of the boys have got the habit of taking their favorite pool cues home, and they forget to bring them back. I got a plan to recover him. Uh, uh, oh, oh, excuse me, Molly. Hey, you never met my wife, Georgie. Now, uh, Molly, this is the secretary of the Elks Club, George Marshall. How do you do, uh, uh, Marshall? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I wired McGee to see if he'd spearhead a committee for me to get the food deal back. <laughs> George Marshall, you're the guy who said, "Oh, this is ridiculous." <laughs> There's no rubbing or buffing. You merely apply and let dry. That's all you have to do to bring out the beauty of your kitchen linoleum with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. In fact, the glowing shine of glow coat makes the whole room a far more pleasant place to work. The new glow coat shines nearly twice as bright as ever before, and that extra brightness puts new life in linoleum colors, makes floors gleam and shine with an added luster. Troublesome heavy traffic areas can be touched up easily with Johnson's glow coat. Your floors will be easier to keep clean, too. A whisk or two with a damp cloth takes care of all dust, dirt, and spill things. And remember, wax protects valuable linoleum and adds years to its life. That's the glow coat story, friends. It shines, it protects, and it makes floors easy to keep clean. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat is the perfect way to bring out the beauty of your home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. I paid off the cab and let him go, Molly. As long as we're downtown, we might as well catch a movie. Wonderful. But you should have kept the taxi cab, did you? Oh, we can call another one after the movie. Why should I kept that one? Your suitcase is in it. What? <laughs> oh, good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax Products, Racing Wisconsin, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each Tuesday night at this time. Be with us again next week, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is WMAQ, NBC in Chicago.